Hello guys and welcome back to the Isle of Wight. It's been a little while, I know it's almost five weeks since my last video went out and even that wasn't my own. <laughs> so apologies for that but there has been a reason behind that, mostly down to a lack of time based on my full time job. But I am back, I am building and I am kicking it large. We are back into the series and I wanted to spend a bit of time on the, the Isle of Wight series over Monaco because we have done quite a lot of Monaco towards the end of 2019. So I thought we would start off 2020 with a couple of episodes from the Isle of Wight. Don't worry, I know there's a lot of you who want to also see Monaco. I will be still working on Monaco and we still have deadlines to meet. But anyway, last time round, in episode 10 we had a guest build by Rick 4000 and this build is absolutely sensational like I said in the previous video I have learnt a lot in terms of building more realistic villages and that's not going to be the end of these guest builds I have got some amazing people lined up to also work on the island so stay tuned for them but let's move on now to episode 11 now unfortunately there is not a lot of footage for the main start of this episode and the reason for that is I was doing a lot of work off camera and I decided to sort of lay down the foundations to this part of the island prior to actually releasing the video because I wanted this episode to be a bit more about the detail and how I was able to achieve the realistic look that I hope you guys would agree I managed to achieve. So this main area is consistent of a high street, which is the part looking over into the sea. That's where most of the shops are. There's a few houses, but the majority of it is uh, commercial and a few pubs and hotels. And then behind that is the huge array of the housing estates. We won't get all of it done today, but we can at least start to detail the main part. So that's what you'd have missed on camera it was basically me spending a few hours plopping down some buildings which wouldn't been at all interesting to watch as a time lapse so let's kick off let's have a look at how we started to detail so a lot of the buildings i did use don't actually have back gardens i mean some of these ones especially the ones from rick 4000 the the more generic buildings they do have some sort of a backyard sort of thing um, going on but the housing that I used for this area had no gardens at all so what I was doing was using a combination of the um, network fences to sort of map out the area to give me a better understanding on how much I need to detail how much foliage we could add in and sort of just divide it up and make it look a bit more realistic and I decided to add in this little segment here just behind the actual high street will basically consist of what I imagine to be a little sort of car workshop garage and a warehouse we've got the post office there on the corner as well so I wanted to try and add in a bit of variation because you do find that you do have these quirky little areas where buildings are sort of placed in amongst housing estates in between commercials kind of in the areas where you typically wouldn't end up building a house because it's not really suitable and you'll find that this is quite common certainly in the UK where in between houses and sort of back alley areas is where you'll find a little few a few little industrial estates and yeah a couple of random buildings that you know are more work like than sort of livable so I really wanted to create that variance between the two and I wanted to make a few sort of separation barriers. So if you imagine here, we've got these front um, sort of high street facing houses. So these are obviously going to be quite expensive to buy, um, but you'll tend to see that they don't always have very big gardens, but they are separated to what's behind it. And bearing in mind, this is a garage. I wanted to put some very big sort of bushes in between these two areas. I even created a little alleyway and separation of two fences you've got the the metal fences there which separates the uh, the actual industrial section of the area and then the actual houses their fences as well so just to create a bit more realism I wanted to try and create the barrier that you would expect to have between a back garden and um, an industrial warehouse and then obviously messing up the concrete here using some of the stains and adding some car parking spaces the the, the, the basic things that you would expect and you know, a common to detailing in these areas were what I went for here. Now on a side note, just briefly, 
A huge thank you to everyone who had entered the Christmas giveaway. Um, congratulations to the three winners. I hope you enjoy your vouchers and you've spent them well. Um, and good luck to you guys next year. It's something that I do have, well, I have been doing um, every Christmas and I expect to carry that on as well. It's nice to be able to give back as well. And also thank you for the kind comments during the time off that I had. I had a number of you contact me in various different platforms, um, either telling me that I'm doing a good job or I've inspired you to um, create something yourself. So a huge shout out to those kind people who did contact me. It's always extremely nice to hear those sort of words. Um, the reason I do these videos is in the hope to inspire you and give you some ideas. Because when I first started the game and I didn't feel as creative, there was times where I was stuck, I didn't know how to build, and I kind of almost went off the game at first. Um, but then finding some YouTube creators and seeing screenshots and that, I really got the inspiration to start building again. And that's kind of what I'm here for. That's my purpose, I feel, <laughs> for the community, is to sort of give you guys some inspiration. I can show you what I'm building, and hopefully that will give you some hints and tips of trying to do yourself and also the tutorials i'm going to try and do a few more of those this year as well so if there's any tutorials you would like to see done on particular mods or scenarios let me know in the comment section below because i have got a few ideas on what i can do but there are obviously a lot of things out there that you guys may be struggling with that i haven't thought of or just want to see on my take on how to do something so keep me posted on that and let me know in the comments section below. I've also been looking at some different background music. There hasn't been that many comments said, but I know there was at the start of the series. And it's always something that I sometimes struggle with is finding a good um, background song whilst the time lapses are going along. I'm, I'm kind of like the fact of finding good songs for the outro and obviously the intro to this series is always going to stay the same i really enjoy that particular song um but i have sourced some more music that is obviously playing now so i'm hoping that that will give a, a nicer vibe to the videos because i do think that music really does lend its hand when it comes to these sort of videos time lapses for some people may be boring you may skip over it to the final part of the episode with the actual cinematics and finale which is all fine everyone does it in their own little way but I do find that having a nice type of time-lapse sound music does change the look and the feel of the video so let me know all your thoughts on that as well be interesting to see and hear what you think of these new selections but anyway back to the build you'll see now we're just adding a few more buildings to the front here so like I said, this main strip here is kind of classed as the high street. Um, there are some housing on there as well. As you can imagine that some of these buildings that are now shops could have easily been houses when they first were developed. And over time, they've been sold off for people who have seen a business opportunity, having a seafront um, shop or cafe or something like that and they've slowly turned themselves more into a commercial high street. So that's the kind of the vibe I was going for with this segment here. And then I was trying to find suitable buildings to fit this area and I kind of stumbled across two types um, which I've combined together. Now, one interesting thing that has happened and this also is coming from a few comments of the fact of where is the safe game. I know I did promise that I would look into the save games and release them um, on a sort of weekly or fortnightly basis when the videos come out and I still intend to do that however you may notice it in the cinematics at the end but for this particular area here I'm getting a very strange simulation issue um, and what I mean by that is there is a stutter in the simulation of like the cars and people moving around almost like there's something running in the background um, causing an issue now you may think to yourselves okay well is it the same throughout the whole game and no it's not if I move over to another segment of the map it works fine as soon as we come into this segment here there are a bit of a, a laggy drop 
Um, so every time the game simulates one day, the start of the day, just after the start of the day, it does kind of have a tiny pause, which obviously is really painful for doing cinematics because you notice it. <laughs> well, I do anyway, because I'm watching this back, you know, time after time, and I can see these little issues. It may not be as, um, as obvious to people watching the cinematics back, but it is for me, and I know now, you probably will notice it because I've told you. <laughs> um, but it's a really strange issue, um, and, Whilst it doesn't happen with other built up areas, it's only this, it made me think maybe some of the props or assets I've used have been killing the the frames, but the frames haven't been that dramatically painful. Um, I've actually used the Move It Mod tool to delete everything in this area and still the traffic sort of simulation is a bit of a strange issue. So I am happy to still release the save game, but there will be areas where the lag could be quite dramatic for some people um, so if that is something that's okay with you guys obviously you know that loading up the type of builds I do is not going to be running at 40 frames um, per second it's going to be between sort of three to eight so if that's something that everyone's happy with I will continue to upload the save games and obviously you can use the move it tool to delete certain parts of the map if you want to just see something in its um, its former glory but as I understand I know a lot of you want to just spend some time looking around because a cinematic of a, of a build is all well and good but I understand that if you had the time to look around yourself you'll obviously see a lot more into it so let me know again guys in the comments section if that's okay acceptable and if you want that to be a thing So in this part of the build, I wanted to build up a bit more of a high street. So as well as having the high street on the main seafront, I wanted to have a bit sort of going in towards the actual town area as well. And I thought it would be a bit fancy and sort of try and create a bit of a bit of uniqueness here. And I um, just thought I'd play around with the PO here and basically make a little driveway through to maybe that's where the lorries go to drop off the stock, etc. So. Having a bit of fun with PO there, you know I always have at least one PO item done per episode, so there it is this week. Now, building the housing area up is always difficult. And what I mean by difficult is there, we are very truly blessed to have a lot of the UK houses and different types of them on the workshop. But when you want to build up a large area, it does take a bit of time, um, especially the way I play. Um, I'm using these buildings from the likes of Rick 4000 and Mac Welshman and they are beautiful buildings but they take a lot of time to create um, and use and I know Mac has got some with gardens on which is perfect and it's certainly ones that I'm going to start using a bit more of but in this episode I did kind of use those ones and detail the gardens themselves which I did enjoy because you do get a bit more realism that way but you'll see those terraced houses were really good for this particular build because they were already detailed um, to a decent degree. I mean, some of the build, the props of the trees, for example, weren't the ones I would like to use, but I'm sort of going for a detailed front area, such as the high street, and then their main sort of housing area. We're just gonna, you know, we're not gonna detail that much. I don't think we need to really, and I think the, the frames were probably cry 
at us if we did decide to detail the whole area it's not possible um, so the sort of development of this housing area beyond this episode um, will definitely be a lot less detailed and we'll probably do an episode of that just to sort of fill out the area because I do want to get the the growth going in this area um, there's only 2,200 people in the build so far um, so the more we build the more likely we'll have some more people walking around and making things just look more realistic and I really like these little shops as well these are the ones that you tend to see very often at a, a UK sort of seafront area and, and you know in general you will see these um, housing buildings that are being converted into shops and the flat upstairs is typically the the owner's house so to speak um, and I really do like these they are very well detailed and there's enough variance in them that we can take advantage ourselves and plop them down one after the other and not make it look too repetitive so that's something that I want to add in and I do now know that there is a fish and chip shop as well <laughs> um, which we need to add and some other buildings as well that suit it like a gift shop we need to have a gift shop there's always a gift shop on the seafront for these um, seaside UK resorts or <laughs> locations so we need to do that as well. I don't know about you, but detailing gardens is always something that I find a little bit tricky. 
Probably because there's so many different assets and props out there, I never know what ones to use. And I mean, each garden you have and you see, if you were to look down from a bird's eye view, are always different. There's never the same item in there. So when it comes to mass detailing, such as what you just saw on camera there, it does tend to be a bit tricky because um, you don't want to get that repetitive feel. If you get that repetitive feel, it just doesn't feel realistic. So it does become a bit tricky and it'd be interesting to hear your thoughts on how you do that. If you're detailing gardens of a big block or big housing estate, how do you do it? Do you go very basic? Do you copy and paste exactly the same in each garden? Um, be interesting to hear how you guys get around those situations because you can get away with it to a degree but I think when I'm building it doesn't tend to fare up well if I am just copy and pasting the same stuff. I try and make things a bit different. Having said that, as we are going to be developing this area out on quite a large scale, I'm probably going to copy and paste a lot of the buildings that we have done, but in terms of copy and pasting the areas that we've kind of made a bit different from each other. So at least then we put those down, it shouldn't look too repetitive. So I'm probably gonna do that in a couple of episodes time. I've got some other stuff we're gonna be working on in the meantime. So that's an idea on getting around that. And hopefully then also we won't detail as heavily because then we won't lose the frames. Also on a tree front, I would like some feedback from you guys in terms of which trees are most common from the workshop for the UK. I've been picking out a few that look realistic but I know there's a lot of amazing trees on the workshop and I want to use the forest brush um, to its potential and I want to have sort of two, three, four, maybe five trees that are suited to the UK that I can add in there. So if anyone wants to do me a huge favour, jump on the workshop and pick out a few trees that would be suitable for a UK build, please do so and let me know the, uh, the locations of those. Jump in a Discord if that's best or just let me know in the comment section below because I do want to start mapping out this area in terms of the whole island and adding in some of the trees to make it look more realistic. And I think now is probably a good time to once again ask the question of where do you want me to build next on the island? Now, as I said, I am trying to follow the, the main areas of the Isle of Wight as best I can, but I am going to be building some more, I guess, um, creative off the cuff areas as well. I don't want to copy it like for like, it's not going to be a Monaco project, but I do want to base it on the Isle of Wight, obviously. So if there's a location you want to see being built or you want to see something based upon something, whether it's a zoo or something like that, let me know as well in the comment section. What do you want to see next? Now, the next episode, as I have already recorded, it, is going to be a bit more of a rural build. So look out for that. Very different to what we're doing here today. So if that was going to be what you was going to request, um, probably not worth it because you'll get to see that next week. So I reckon I probably got around four weeks worth of videos in the, the making. I've recorded the footage, um, but I just need to do the editing so there is going to be some videos pending and I'm hoping that's going to give me a bit of a, a backlog because I do have a event to go to for work at the end of the month which is going to take up another solid week or two of my free time which is a little bit annoying but it is what it is um, and I'm just working around it so again apologies that I can't commit to a weekly video I am obviously working towards that um, and I'm just going to have to switch between the two projects as opposed to having one going out each week. But I think that there will be more time eventually, which will hopefully allow me to do that a bit more readily. So I thank you all for bearing with me at this moment in time with the channel. Um, it's good to see that we are still getting lots of new subscriptions as well. And the usual comments and likes are always well worthwhile to see i'm always happy to read your comments and i reply to pretty much every single one as best i can but as for this episode that's pretty much it for this week um there's a little before and after coming up and then the usual cinematics with another in my opinion well chosen song to um outplay this video to you so with that said have yourself a good rest of the weekend Enjoy your week and I will see you in the next video. 
Thanks for watching, everyone, and all the best.